Hello there. Um, apologies for being away for, for some time. Um, all manners of issues. It means that I haven't been able to upload material for, for quite some time. But hopefully now that is behind us and everything is sorted and, and I'm back to ministry as, as I once was. This week has been a difficult one for the profession. I think everywhere that I was visiting on Wednesday, we talked about only one thing, and that was the RCVS changes to under our care. I think despite knowing they were coming, they hit the profession with a little bit of a surprise, predominantly due to the fact that there were so many voices of discernment that we weren't sure whether or not they were going to continue. It seemed as though further discussion had to happen. And then they were implemented in virtually a week later, we had this delay to the part about parasiticides. This comes onto the backdrop of over the summer when we've heard about mass redundancies from some of the corporate practices. It is amid an ongoing recruitment crisis. And then, of course, the CMA have announced a big review of veterinary prices and pricing structures and want to make a public investigation into that, of which most of us have no control over. All this feeds nicely into the fact that on the 10th of September, it is Suicide Prevention Day. And we can see that we are being battered from all sides. We've been battered from people outside the industry. We're being battered by factors within the industry. We're being battered by those people who are supposed to protect us. And I think all of this can lead to an incredibly stressed and overwhelmed and undermined profession at the moment. And so I'd like to turn today to Psalm 22, um, which comes from the Old Testament, but it's also important that this is the psalm that some scholars think that Jesus read out on the cross prior to his death. And it is a psalm of negativity. It's a psalm in which if the writer thinks that all sorts of forces are out to get them and they're in a very, very dark place. I mean, read you a section. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I have cried desperately for help, but it still does not come. During the day, I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. I call at night, but get no rest. For I am no longer a human being. I am a worm, despised and scorned by everybody. All who see me jeer at me. They stick out their tongues and shake their heads. You relied on the Lord, they said. Why doesn't he save you? If the Lord likes you, why doesn't he help you? It was you that brought me safely through birth. And when I was a baby, you kept me safe. I've relied on you since the day I was born, and you have always been my God. Do not stay away from me. Trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many enemies surround me. Like bulls, they are all around me. And they open their mouths like lions, roaring and tearing at me. My strength has gone. Gone like water spilt on the ground. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like melted wax. My throat is as dry as dust and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have left me for dead in the dust. An evil gang is round me like a pack of dogs, they close in on me. They tear at my hands and feet. All my bones can be seen. My enemies look at me and stare. Come quickly to my rescue. Lord, don't stay away from me. Save me from the sword. Save me from these dogs. Rescue me from these lions. Help me with these wild bulls. The author of the psalm is at their wit's end. They have been left for dead. They know they are so depressed and beaten down that they don't even consider themselves to be fully human anymore. 
this is a writer that is suffering severe depression. This is a writer where we could imagine is having suicidal thoughts. This is a writer who is very, very close to death, either from those around them or by their own hand. And we can read this as a text about ourselves and the troubles that come and how that affects our mental health. We can read it as a parable on the profession, that all the dangers that are surrounding the profession and putting pressure on the profession are causing those people within it to leave. And we know that is true. And I think we have got to be very careful. Because having looked and read and realised why these changes from the Royal College are coming, it's about antimicrobial resistance. It's about protecting the environment from parasiticides. A lot of it is just tightening regulations that we've already had and come a little bit lax with it. But rather than just plunging in with new rules and strengthening the powers already there and potentially having people on disciplinaries for not following them, we need to look at why things are the way they are. We need to look at the difficulties in practice and we need to be careful of how we implement changes that in doing so, we do not add to the burden of the already overworked veterinary team. I will be writing to the Royal College um, on the behalf of those who I minister to to point out that actually while their thoughts on their processes and their ideas come from the best intention places, they rarely consider the impact that has on the profession. They rarely consider the impact that has on individuals. And I think that they add rather than relieve the pressures that we're dealing with. And that's not just about the stuff we have seen this week or this summer, but for a number of years. And I think they have to reconsider some of the impact that they are having on people. There's very little that can be said um, about suicide and suicide prevention that we don't already know and that we haven't already covered in previous talks. Please, please, if anybody is feeling run down, speak to somebody. Speak to Vet Life. They are there and they understand the profession. If you have employee assistance programs within your practice, make use of them. If you want to speak to someone further afield, there are loads and loads of charities. There are charities for men, charities for women. There are charities that work with different groups of people, age ranges, sexual orientations. There are all sorts of different charities who, who will be there and ready to help you. Please do not suffer in silence. We need to talk about things. And we need to make sure that we prevent suicides. As the status on social media goes, not one more vet. We need to stop this. The good news is that Psalm 22 does not end on that dark note. It continues and it says... I will tell my people what you have done. I will praise you in their assembly. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. He does not neglect the poor or ignore their suffering. He does not turn away from them, but answers when they call for help. In the full assembly, I will praise you for what you have done. In the presence of those who worship you, I will offer what I have promised. The poor will eat as much as they want. Those who come to the Lord will praise him. All proud people will bow down before him. Future generations will serve him. They will speak of the Lord to the coming generation. People not yet born will be told the Lord saved his people. Amen. Let us pray.
Lord, we pray for all within the profession. We pray for those who have struggled with changes in guidance and regulation. We pray for those who are having to deal with the complaints and the moans about things that are out of our hands. And we pray for those practice teams who've had emergency meetings and changes in protocols, only to then be told that the implementation has been delayed. And we pray for those who are finding it incredibly difficult at the moment, Lord. Pray for all those who are off sick. And today in particular, we pray for those who are off sick for mental health. We pray for those who are in practice who should be off sick. We ask you to make us aware of our mental health. To know when it is time to take a break. To give us the courage and the strength to admit that to ourselves, our employers and the world. And we ask you also, Lord, to help us get better. To heal us. To save us from the numerous things that surround us that put us down and drive us into depression. You can lift us above all that so that we may have life and life in all its fullness. Amen.